Welcome to Let's Learn Jurassic World Evolution. All right, hi, this is Atticon, and welcome to a Jurassic World Evolution Fundamentals video. In this video, we're going to talk about how to maximize your dinosaur rating so that you can have the most effective park possible. And why would you, first of all, want high dinosaur ratings? Very simple. First of all, the money that you make, the income that you have coming in from ticket sales, that's your main source of income in this game by a mile, ticket sales is directly related to the rating of your dinosaurs. So here you can see our dinosaur rating. This is on Matanceros, this particular one. And we have a five-star dinosaur rating. And I do want to say also this particular thing we're going to look at, and I'm going to use this for the uh, doing the, these fundamentals, is a park that I just finished where I did Montanceros without ever leaving. I did not go to, to Muerta and start it up, start the additional research, get additional dinosaurs or anything else. Just stayed on this, this park and kept building it to see if we could get a five-star overall. And of course we do. We have a five-star island here on Montanceros without ever leaving Montanceros. So this is what you can get from working through Montanceros. And I'll walk through the in different videos how to get through these different pieces of it. But this particular one, I wanna focus on some techniques for maximizing your dinosaur ratings. So the first one is, you can hear it coming in right there. There's an expedition returning. The first thing is do expeditions. They are critical. Do expeditions, keep them going, keep having uh, expeditions uh, going out and coming back as frequently as you, you can the and get these fossils and keep no less and keep uh doing extractions in your fossil center to increase the uh, genome rating of your dinosaur now this one you can see we have ceratosaur at this point we've already got our ceratosaur all the way up as high as he can go so we can sell off these fossils but you want to keep constantly sending out expeditions to grab more fossils and to um, uh, keep increasing the genome rating. Why? Because the higher your genome rating, the higher your dinosaur rating. And let me clean up a little bit here and get rid of this. We just lost an Edmonds Montasaurus, so we'll fix that in a second. But if you look at your whoops, your dinosaur rating, you have a base rating for the dinosaurs that you use. Then authenticity, that means how high is your genome rating for those dinosaurs, gives you points. Then the set that I'm going to get into the modifications and then there's other pieces here as well but the main thing is how what's the base rating of the dinosaurs I've made how authentic are they how high is my genome rating and have I modified them so the first thing to do is get that genome rating as high as you can the second thing is to get those modifications so when we create a new dinosaur and let's just replace our Edmontosaurus that just died so you can see here, we've got this guy at 86%, which is pretty good. We, we could stand to do more with him, but we want to go in and set up modifications as many as we possibly can. We would love to have a cosmetic modification for the Montasaurus, there isn't one available. But we want to make sure that we have as many of these categories picked. So you can see I've got cardio strength here. I've got uh, robust digestion here on this particular one. And just to show you what happens here, if we take that off, he's a 20. If we move him over here and take off the cardio strength, he's still a 20. We're not really changing him. But if we wanted to make him the highest possible rating, let's see if there's anything that could help us here. There he goes up to, well, okay, what happened there? Okay, we can move him up to a 21 with robust digestion, 22 with intuitive learning, 22 with intensive repair, 22 with immune response. So any one of those 22s would be great. Let's do intuitive learning. Then we can go over here to lifespan. He's at 22. Let's see if we can take him up. Okay, we can move him up with immune response. We can move up to 23. So now we've moved this dinosaur from a 20 to a 23. And that's a tiny move because he's not the, not the highest rated dinosaur in the world, but on the higher ones you see even more dramatic changes. So we're going to incubate that guy as a 23. So <clears throat> I know I'm telling you things that should be obvious, but one, do your expeditions, get your genome rating up. 
Two, modify every dinosaur you put out, modify them as much as you can within the constraints of what you can afford. And when I say that, I mean try to get on your research relative to this. We'll talk about research later, but get the success rate uh, increase because it increases your your uh, viability by 10%. So if you look at our Edmontosaurus we're creating, he's 73% base rating plus 30% for those three changes. That means there's a better than, there is a absolute chance he will come out, he will survive. We will not uh, lose this uh, egg. It will survive. We will get a result out of this. We will get this dinosaur with a 23 rating coming out of this Hammond lab as soon as he's ready. And you can see we've hit a point where my dinosaurs are starting to get old. So here we've got a Triceratops that is, has died of old age, which tells me that my other Triceratops, I don't want to even go there yet. I'll come back to that, the other techniques we want to use. So, all right, so we've got, we've got the uh, genomes being developed. We've got um, genome mods as much as we can. So that's the first thing. So you give them these, the highest rating coming out of that uh, lab that you can get. Now, how do we maximize our dinosaur ratings based on what we have here? Now, depending upon the island you have, you have different dinosaurs. This one's Montanceros. We have the least possible, really, uh, ready to go. Let's go ahead and release this guy. Okay, we've got, got him going out into the world, and you'll notice the little gate system of simple, I've got two paddocks. There's a third paddock down here. Pretend that one's not here for now for our discussion. Uh, we'll come back to that one later on. But we've got two gates, one going over here to the ceratosaurs, one over here going to the herbivores. This gate this is open, this gate's closed, so these can go to the right one, obviously. At a site in Canada. I'll let you guess where. The T -Rex okay, there he goes, out into the field. And who's to argue? All right, next thing to maximize our ratings is maximize the use of your paddocks. So let's take, for example, this paddock right over here, which is set up with our ceratosaurs in it. You'll notice there's three ceratosaurs in there. That's not an accident. The reason being that if I'm going to dedicate this much space in my park to have these ceratosaurs, to have these uh, uh, large uh, carnivores, then I want to maximize the value. Now, right now, I only have, in Montanceros, I only have one carnivore available to me, the ceratosaur. But the ceratosaur can take in a social group, meaning how many of his own species, up to three. So, why not put three in there? They're, they're highly rated. They're the highest uh, rated dinosaur we have available to us in this whole group. So why not put three in there and maximize the use of this space? Get as much rating out of this space as we get. So in other words, let's get three times 135, about 500 points, rather than 135 points. So that's, that's an obvious one. When you build out your other pens and you put mixtures of, of um, dinosaurs in them, plan them out so that you can put the maximum amount that you can get in there to uh, maximize the, the rating. Now, if you go back and look, I'll refer you to the video I did called Five Star Sorna, and I had a plan for that one. That's, you know, at Sorna, you're way down the road. You've got a lot of dinosaurs available, and I had a full plan so that I could build a four by four area and have 21 different species with 36 dinosaurs in it and max out all that, all that land so that we got a five star on Sorna with just that one set of four paddocks. Now here, we've got a lower standard. We're on Montanceros where I only need a thousand to be a five star. Notice we've dropped off now because we got rid of our, our Triceratops. So we've actually, you know, we're not quite a five star island right now because we had one die. Now here, um, so we can replace that and get right back up. But what I wanted to show you here about maximizing the paddocks, let's say we had our two paddocks to start. Then we built this one down here, and we're going along in our game. And you'll notice I've got Crichtonsaur and Cynoceratops in here. Um, in fact, um, let's just talk quickly about that. Another way to maximize what you can get on an island, particularly Montanceros, the first one, is to get all your dinosaurs. So you want to think about how can I earn dinosaurs? 
And one of the ways you do that, oops, sorry, I keep hitting the wrong button, is through your contracts and through your reputation. So with your reputa reputation, with each of these people, science, entertainment, and security, you can get certain things that they'll give you if you raise your reputation high enough. Now in this case, I've earned them all, but you'll notice a couple of key ones here as far as what we're talking about for, for our dinosaur ratings. Crichtonsaurus, Cri which we get from science, which gives us the option to get to research that fossil, and Cynoceratops, which uh, uh, gives us the option to research that fossil, and now we can go out and dig those up and have more dinosaurs that we can put in our park. So, actually in this particular run through, the way I built this up to start and got it to five stars without ever leaving was by doing that. I just made sure I kept doing contracts to the point where I had every dinosaur that I could possibly get on the island and then I built paddocks to match them and then put them all out there and sure enough was able to get a five star rating without doing anything really much of anything else. So let's just now our, our um, Triceratops I think we've got him about as high as he can get close to it. We've got Tooth Heartless, we've got Skin Tufta. We've got a couple of mods on him, not necessarily the absolute highest ones we could get. Let's see. we got a 50, still 50. Yep, we've got him maxed out. We've got her maxed out. So let's just go ahead and create another Triceratops. Now we got another one dying. This is what happens when you hit at the end. Picking up asset. We might as well grab another Edmontosaurus while we're talking here. Okay. Three words. Contract you, yes. So, to maximize your pins, more buildings in the can case only like this, more opportunities. Go for it. In a case like this, like your Ceratosaurs, put as many as they'll handle in there together. In a case like this, you want to have a nice mixture of, uh, in this, like this herbivore pen, you want a mixture of species so you don't end up with a variety penalty, penalty because that's the other piece of this. So you can get penalized for variety if you don't have enough different species. If you just keep pumping out ceratosaurs, for example, you could build a park of, you know, 30 ceratosaurs, but you get a big penalty for variety because that's all you'd have is that one type of dinosaur. And in welfare comes, in our case, we've got dead ones that need uh, need to be moved out once that one's gone. Our welfare penalty will go Resupply away. Resupply request acknowledged. No problem. Confirmed. Okay, let me keep the park running here while I talk. Uh, so maximize your paddocks. Plan out your paddocks. Figure out a combination of dinosaurs that works and maximize them. That's, that's uh, another technique for maximizing your ratings. Now... Earn all your dinosaurs. We talked about that. Here's the here's the ones where it gets a little bit. Um, uh, eh, it depends on what your attitude is about, is about things. So I'm actually going to reload and start over because we're going to get some good examples here. Okay, the first one I want to talk about here is I call it dying with dignity. When you have a dinosaur which kills another dinosaur in combat or actually just devours another dinosaur, period. It can pick up to about half of the rating of the other dinosaur it'll gain in value. So what we're going to do here, we know that our Triceratops are getting old. So we can watch our Triceratops. Here's one's 89 that was expected to last to 60. So we can either watch them closely and watch their ages, and then as they age, we can Adding to the list. tranquilize our Triceratops. And we've got another one out here, I'm fairly certain. No problem. There we go. Trans tranquilize our Triceratops, and we'll basically allow them to die with dignity. They're old, they're going to die of old age, which gains us no value whatsoever. But if we catch them before they're, they're too old, while that's going on, we know we're going to lose two Triceratops, so we could go in and then incubate their two replacements. So we've got two more on the way out. 
and then the ones that are just about to pass away from old age, we simply take them over to the carnivores and let them die with dignity, let them go down fighting against this, the ceratosaur. And then what will happen, the dinosaur will die, which it would do anyway, and our ceratosaur will pick up points. So like in the case of this one, we've got this triceratops, ah, uh, going tranquilize, he's rated at zero. A victory. I was expecting no less. Uh, let's see what they're worth. They're worth 50, okay. So we've got a couple of 50, so we're going, whichever ceratosaur, sorry, ceratosaur, <laughs> ends up fighting. Oh, look at this. This one died. It died, oh, I see why it's zero. It died of old age before we could move it. Let's see if we can get this one over there. Heading to pick up the asset. How old is this one? Now, this one's actually young. Uh, here's what I would do, by the way. If you're going to use this tactic, I would build, I would incubate in pairs. I would build two at a time. And then, when and that way you don't have to watch it so closely. When one of them dies, you know, the other one is about to, then you could tranquilize it and move it. So we could say, imagine we saw this one die. These two had been built in pairs. So we would tranquilize the one that survived and move it over and let it go down with dignity because it's old and it's about to die anyway. So uh, that's, that's the dying with dignity approach. And then, of course, you replace them with another pair. Asset being transported. To put back in the, in the appropriate pin so that they can go on with their lives. So that's dying with dignity. And once, the, once this finishes, we'll see how that works. And then I'll show you uh, a couple of more techniques. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. You can stop what you're doing. All right, I want these uh, dinosaurs to clear out. So here you can see we've got our triceratops and, and, our, and our, we're <laughs> representing a case where this would be an old triceratops over here. And eventually he's gonna get in a fight with one of these guys and of course he's gonna lose. He'll go down swinging, but he is going to lose. There, they're getting close. This is probably, it's probably coming. And some of you probably love these fights. I don't, uh, don't get off on them at all. But there, look at that. T-Top could have got a nice shot. Oh, look at that. Not good down there. Half, halfway. Nice shot by the by the Triceratops, but uh, I have a feeling I know which way this is going to go. There. He's on. Uh, she's almost done now, but she got. She went out swinging. She got in a great shot on this uh, Ceratosaur. Now the Ceratosaur, which was at 135. Now it's killed, and now its value goes up to 160. So we picked up, picked up value. We now have asset requiring collection. Our tri Triceratops went out making a contribution to our park. Our Ceratosaur has a higher rating. We put two more dinosaurs out back in its place, and our net uh, for all of that, having lost uh, uh, two dinosaurs who got old, was our park actually improved its rating. So that's, that's the dying with dignity approach. Build in pairs. When one of the pair dies, tranquilize the other, kind of, sorry to say this, but feed it to the carnivores and then replace uh, that pair with two more. So that's kind of dying with dignity. Then the next one is sort of, I kind of call this one, uh, luncheon, is on the, uh, luncheon is served on the veranda. And I hope this dinosaur will go out of here so I can close this.
Come on. Man, you really know how to put on a show. That's what I call star power. Okay, so now we've got now what we're going to do is open the gate to the ceratosaurs. And this is a technique you can just keep if you're if you if you don't mind this kind of uh, slaughter of the lambs. And by the way, I don't play like this typically. I, I typically don't do these uh, techniques, but they're they're here, so we might as well talk about them. So what I'm going to do here is just keep making these inexpensive little struthiomimuses. You notice he's rated 11, so every time that uh, one of them is killed by a carnivore, that carnivore's rating is going to go up about five points. And it's a pretty cheap investment you can just keep serving. And these Struthies are great because they uh, incubate quickly. I really struggle with this because I really, I really do have a struggle with this kind of lamb, lambs to the slaughter kind of thing. But then I realized I had no trouble making these little live bait feeders. So all these little goats are out here getting swallowed up whole by dinosaurs constantly. And I had no problem with that. Furthermore, even if you don't like the goats, if you put one of these guys out. Well, thank you, Isaac. Um, if you put these out, that meat had to come from somewhere. Some animal died to do that. So here we're going to release the Struthiomimuses. They'll come out in a nice steady flow for us. You can just keep doing this anytime you're kind of... Uh, the center is not doing anything. You can just keep this gate open and keep doing that and keep pumping these out here. Naturally, they're going to be uh, eaten by the ceratosaurs. The ceratosaurs are going to continue to gain um, to gain value. So here we go. This one doesn't even look like it's going to make it into the pen. Uh, maybe. It takes them a while to decide. They have to get hungry and decide they want to hunt. But once they do, bye-bye, Struthiomimus. So I think you get the idea there. So that, that uh, is a different approach. And then kind of uh, a final approach, if you really wanted to pump these guys up and you had a bunch of aging dinosaurs here and you wanted to, uh, this one just, oh gosh. We are going to, like this is called the all you can eat option. This is sort of the buffet is now open. We're, we open both gates, and there you go. There's, there goes one of the Struthies right now. So what we're going to be doing for the next few minutes is hauling off Acknowledging carcasses, asset basically. Collection request. But watching our Ceratosaur ratings go higher and higher and higher. You know, this guy has gotten, this gal right here has decided, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> the buffet's open. I'm headed over. And the one thing, if you do this, and I, I no, not sure I could ever do this, but if you do this, you would want to watch your ceratosaurs because... The Triceratops, we saw it could, it could, it's a nasty little fighter. The Hyangosaur, same thing. So if if one Ceratosaur happened to fight a Triceratops, and then you didn't do anything about it, and it went straight into a fight with the Hyangosaur, you could actually lose the Ceratosaur. And remember, the goal of this is not to lose the Ceratosaurs; it's to it's to clean out our herbivore pad so that we can then restock with higher rated dinosaurs. So these two struthies we uh, put out there, they might last a while because there's tastier stuff out here. But they would be gone and if we were using that other technique solely. So I can't watch this. I can't watch all this carnage. Uh, but I will, well, it's, inter it's interesting what that you, there, there, the ceratosaur just killed something, killed the Dracorex. Notice it's rating going up and up and up. Asset collection request received. And this, by the way, could happen in on one of the islands with bad weather. You, if you happen to have shared fence and that fence got broken down, uh, you could you could have an unintentional 
session of this. Just monitor it and you know do the best you can. And if you don't like it, start uh, tranquilizing your carnivores as quickly as you can, and then moving them. And you can see our combat infamy is going up. That's adding. That's uh, so we're basically losing. In this approach, you lose half the value of this herbivore paddock because the other half becomes increases to this paddock. And then, when it's all done, you replace this paddock with dinosaurs that are very, very likely to be higher rated. And therefore, um, you're actually, every, every, everything improves about the park as far as your rating. Now here we go. That uh, Hyangasaur, the toughie. He's got that beautiful little tail whip move, but it's just not quite enough to take out any of the big predators. And there's the kill move. And now this Ceratosaur is 216. Now he's at 235. So you can see he's, cli he's rapidly climbing. Now here's one. This guy got in a fight maybe too soon. He, let's, this gal, let's see if she survives. No, no, watch this, watch this, this is a good kill. Watch the T-tops here. Look at this. Look at that. Ouch. Ouch. That Ceratosaur just lost it, but let's see what their Triceratops are. We now have a 167 Triceratops out there in the park. At this point, well, on the people in that Triceratops age, we could say... It's only eight years old. That would be a good one to keep. Or, of course, if we let this continue, we still have two more ceratosaurs out here that can finish that off. So, that that one is the bloodbath method. I wouldn't use it, but it's there. You might as well know it's there and realize that you're just, these, these ceratosaurs are gaining points like crazy. But, on the other hand, we, we let one of them die and after it died, that Triceratops uh, finished him off. And after it died, we lost all those points we gained. Okay, so we talked about earning all your dinos. We talked about um, opening up kind of the luncheon where we're just continually serving little struthies out there and sacrificing them to raise up the values. We talked about dying with dignity where we build them in pairs. And then when one dies, we ship off the older the one who's about to die over to the um, uh, carnivores. And then uh, there is, of course, just open open the gates. If we open the gates in both directions, the ceratosaurs will go in and start having uh, kind of all-you-can-eat kind of a buffet. And that one's, I, I, can't, I can't do that. I can't, do, I can't even show it to you. But you could do that and carefully watch your ceratosaurs so you don't lose them. And then when, when you're all done, you would have ceratosaurs with very high ratings taking up a small amount of space. And then you could replenish all your stock over here and your total ratings would go way up. And that kind of a technique might be applicable if you had a very, very small island where it's hard to get your ratings up, uh, hint, hint, um, down the road. Uh, you, might, you might think about doing something like that. But basically, to get your dinosaur ratings up, you want to... Lots, keep expeditions going. You want to, um, oh, and I forgot to mention, you also want to research all of your genetic stuff so that you might want to make sure that you have cos as many cosmetic uh, opportunities as you can get, as many of the traits as you can get, so that you can then um, uh, improve the the genome rating of your dinosaurs you met the objectives and secured a victory i was expecting no less so lots of exped constant expeditions constant extractions in the fossil center uh, modify your 
dinosaurs as much as you can before you send them out. Maximize your paddocks. If, if, you can, if you've got one in here and it'll take three, put three in there. Um, if you want to go that route, you can start uh, feeding uh, struthies or something to your dinosaurs to let them, uh, to, to your carnivores, to let them gain value. Or uh, you want, if you want to go that route, you can do the dying with dignity where you kind of build in pairs and, and the second one, uh, one dies and that's a trigger to tell you to send the second one off for its uh, death with dignity as it can go down fighting. And main thing, earn all your dinosaurs and research them all thoroughly and, and uh, develop them thoroughly. So hopefully that'll help you improve your dinosaur ratings. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it adds to your enjoyment of the game. And I hope you'll join us for our next Jurassic World Evolution video. Thank you.